G'day folks, Sapper here with another World of Warships video. We all know that World of Warships doesn't explain stuff well. It tends to leave it to the players to work things out. We all then Google and trawl through the forums and reddits while watching the occasional video that might be up to date enough to give us an accurate answer. It has always frustrated me that I couldn't find a centralised place with distilled chunks of key bits of information on a particular subject. So this is the beginning of a new series to attempt to address this issue in some manner. Key points of information summarised and grouped up into top tens on a particular subject. I'm hoping it helps you and makes your game experience a little easier and a little bit more efficient. In future, I'm looking at covering subjects like the economy, grinding, and improving your skills. In this particular video, it's the things I wish I knew when I was a noob. For those of you that are watching this that are a little bit more experienced, there are a couple of good ones that even you may benefit from. So here are the top 10 things that I wish I knew when I was a beginner, a noob, a complete potato. Number 10. Don't sell any premium ships. There are plenty of free chances to get premium ship drops if you play regularly and over a decent period of time. Some are specific premium crate rewards, or maybe it's a super container or an event gift. When these drops happen, the game looks at what ships you have and gives you something else. And crap premiums always seem to drop frequently. So, don't sell any premiums, even the low tier or bad ones. Number nine. Keep tech tree ships you like. When you start out, one of the things that you may notice is that you don't have enough port slots. It feels like you will never have enough, and this can be enough pressure to sell a ship that you like and move on. Don't stress. There are monthly mission chains that give you free port slots. Be patient, play a fair bit, and get those. There are other missions and campaigns and things that can end up rewarding you with port slots from time to time, so also keep an eye out for them. At absolute worst, port slots are one of the few things that you shouldn't feel guilty about buying with real money, as they are pretty cheap compared to the other things in game. If you do use doubloons, try and get port slots when they're on special, which usually happens a few times a year during certain events. Keep an eye on the patch notes for those, Wargaming does like to keep it a bit quiet. Port slots aside, keeping ships you like to play is a great way to have something to fall back on something fun to take a break from a rough grind. This is even more applicable for ships above tier 5 who can complete most missions and campaigns. Tier 6s and 7s are the cream of the crop when you're starting out, as they also have the option to play in operations in scenario mode. Keeping different ship types from different nations also gives you the best variety of options to complete the different missions and tasks that pop up from time to time. This leads into number eight. Learn nation, type, and line differences. No one should be expected to remember every little detail of every ship in the game. Although there are mods that can help out with that, but that's a topic for another video. Each nation and line of ships has its own commonalities and flavors. By learning these, you position yourself better to win exchanges. Let me explain. If I'm playing against a Royal Navy destroyer, I know it'll usually be an all-rounder with good gunpower, reasonable stealth, and a good number of torpedoes with average range. If I come up against a Japanese battleship, I know it'll usually have a long gun range and good health. If I come up against a US aircraft carrier, I know it'll almost always have HE dive bombers, and in the hands of a good player, they can reliably cripple destroyers. The most effective way to learn the nation, type, and line differences is to play the ships to at least tier 6 or 7. By these tiers, most lines have developed into their niches, and if you don't like the ships that much, you can sell them or set them aside for operations or co-op runs. I have video reviews on some lines, including US battleships to Montana and Royal Navy light cruisers. If you're interested in those, look for a series called Bluff in my YouTube channel. Before we get any further, if you are new around here, don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification buttons if you would like to see more of my content. Number seven. Campaign tasks can be repeated multiple times for stars. 
This is one of those things that some folks don't discover until after 3,000 battles and lament wasted opportunities and time. To give you an idea, I completed the Halsey Hit Hard Hit Fast campaign without playing US Navy ships. And most of those campaign stages only have a couple of tasks that don't require US ships, and they only reward a couple of stars. So use this trick to minimize the time it takes to complete a campaign so you can move on to the next one, as the major rewards are for completing the whole campaign and each of the stages rather than the individual tasks. It's also useful for certain types of limited time campaigns we've seen in the past, although more recently Wargaming have tied these to ownership of certain premium ships, which is sad. Let's hope that they have some of these opportunities in future without the premium ship requirement. And before you call me an eternal optimist, crazier things have happened. Wargaming just started telling us drop rates on Santa crates. Number six, caps win games. Before you attack your keyboard telling me that rushing into a cap is a death sentence, yes, it is. You shouldn't be dying to get a cap. What I mean by caps win games is to keep an eye on the caps and the points accrual and don't let either get out of hand. A cap deficit can quickly turn into a defeat and a big ship advantage without attention to caps can easily be a loss. So always keep an eye on caps and play with them in mind. In line with that, most times it's best to act early to defend a cap in a standard type battle. Standard type battles are the ones where each team starts with a cap that they already own and there are no others. The reason for this is quite simple. If an enemy sneakily caps in this battle type, the battle is over straight away as a loss for whoever lost their cap. So always keep a stray eye on your cap in those games. Oh, and a fun one to know. Any team owned cap that has a diamond frame around the letter is contested. A cap that has a square frame is still owning points or hasn't been capped yet. You can see these shape differences on the minimap, which is also useful. Number five. Adjust speed and course when under threat. This doesn't mean wiggling all over the place all the time. It means when you're about to be under threat from guns, torpedo, or aircraft. The most basic of this is turning towards or away from torpedoes or enemy shells. Although generally with airdrop torpedoes, turn towards them. You can sometimes get to the torps before they have had a chance to arm, leading to no damage. As you get better at it, you can avoid being hit altogether at times. In World of Warships, this skill is often called WASD or WASD hacking for the W, A, S and D keys you use to maneuver your ship. The reason it's called hacking is not actual hacking, but good players can do it so well that they become almost impossible to hit in some ships in certain conditions. So, as you play, don't sail in straight lines or be predictable when you may be under threat. Some people find it useful to be static. While this can work in some conditions, it leaves you highly vulnerable to enemy aircraft carriers or destroyer torpedo attacks, so I don't recommend it until you learn the game better. Number four, use the minimap a lot. The minimap has the most accurate information on things like ship location, ship angle, reticule point, and enemy disposition. It also provides unique information like enemy last position seen and your ship's range indicators for guns, torpedoes, sea detection, air detection, AA, hydro, and radar, depending on what you choose to turn on from this little cog down on the right hand side. Most of the best players in the game spend a large amount of their time looking at the minimap because it gives so much information and they are generally good enough to be able to use it to navigate. Because the minimap is so good, I always suggest enlarging it with the plus symbol to as large as is comfortable for you. Pro tip, use the minimap aim indicator, which is this little circle, to make sure that your aim is correct as the binoculars view can be wrong, particularly on the vertical axis. You can also use it to better predict where an enemy is in smoke with their last detected icon so that you can more effectively blind fire. On that note, if you want to get better at aiming, I strongly recommend you check out Potato Quality's aiming guide. It's excellent. 
Number three, learn how to use the torpedo reticule. The gray zone is the predicted aim for the target's current course and bearing. Use some logic to predict where to aim. If the gray zone is an outline, your type of torpedo cannot harm the target, but they will still spot the torpedoes for their allies if they pass nearby. The gray zone also doesn't account for torpedo range. However, the minimap does. You can use the torpedo prediction zone in combination with the minimap to see if your torpedoes can reach a target based on their current bearing and speed. You can also use this zone to see changes in a target's course or speed, even while your torpedoes are reloading. This in turn can assist you with your gun aim predictions by indicating changes in the target's movement. Number two, learn the correct point of aim for shell types and gun caliber. Different shells have different optimal aim points based on caliber, armor, and the angle of your target. Generally speaking, with HE, aim for deck level for fires and superstructure for pen as well. For AP against broadsides of similar type ships, aim for the waterline. Against bigger ships, aim for the upper belt. Against much bigger ships or significantly armored targets, aim at the superstructure. Short fuse and semi-armor piercing are usually best against superstructures unless you are using battleship sized guns. And of course, nothing is simple, so all of these rules can shift depending on the ship that you are in and the one you are shooting. To find out what shell types your ship has, you can view them in the equipment screen. To find out further information, hover on the armament under the artillery tab in port. So how do you test these things? Number one, when in doubt, use the training room. The training room should be your go-to anytime something happens and you aren't sure why. It's also an excellent place to familiarize yourself with a ship or mechanic or for testing shell types against armor. While co-op can be used to test things, much of the time you won't have enough time or opportunity to do so effectively, which is why the training room is so good. In the training room, you can customize the conditions to exactly what you need, and it's why the pros use it. An important point to note is that you will not use any camo or signal up in the training room, but they are still effective. Somewhat hand in hand with the training room is the armor viewer, which you can access in port. As you get better at understanding game mechanics, the armor viewer becomes an excellent starting point to assess things before testing it in the training room. But more on the armor viewer in another video. Just know that it's there when you are ready to use it. So that's the top 10 things I wish I knew when I was a noob. There are a lot of things that are handy to know. I just thought that these were the most important ones that a player was unlikely to know or easily come across. But before I wrap it up, I do have a few bonus points that didn't quite make the cut, but are definitely worth mentioning. Bonus number one. Get a referral code. Get a friend to send you a referral code and you can earn them community points that they can in turn spend to get both of your stuffs. It can also score you a couple of premium ships along the way. With an invite code, you get a free tier two premium, Diana Lima, and some premium time for playing one battle. Further, once you play one battle in a tier six, you are rewarded with the tier six premium battleship, War Spite, as well as some more premium time, credits, and signals. Warspite is no joke, she is still an amazing ship, despite how long she's been around in the game, and is one of the strongest tier 6 battleships. Fun fact, you can accept an invite code up to your 15th battle, and you can also accept one if you haven't logged in for 90 days. For those returning after 90 days with an invite, 25 battles will net you 2 weeks premium time and 2 super containers. If you're playing on Asia and need a referral code, I've posted one down in the comments section. Bonus number two, don't rush to buy a high tier premium. You shouldn't be looking at high tier premiums unless you've already played at that tier and preferably with that ship type. The reason is, is that the gameplay differs tier to tier and type to type with the biggest changes occurring at tiers eight and above. I should note, it is actually possible to get a tier 9 premium for coal by picking resource crates for your daily rewards every day. You can probably get one in around 3 or 4 months if you play a lot. 
this is a good idea, but just don't take it into randoms until you're at that stage as a player. And for the third and final bonus, service costs are the same no matter what. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, die or survive, your service costs are the same. So use your time to get the most you can out of your ship. Things like damage, kills, caps or defended ribbons earn you the most rewards, so try and score a few of these if you are one of the last players left. Running to the back corner of the map should only be your move if it will get you the win, which it can do sometimes. And that about wraps it up. There are all sorts of other little ones, but I wanted to keep these focused on the important stuff. And I'm saving a couple for future top 10s as they're better suited to other subjects like economy or grinding. So, don't sell premium ships. Keep tech tree ships you like. Learn nation type and line differences. Campaign tasks can be repeated multiple times for stars. Caps win games. Adjust speed and course when under threat. Use the minimap a lot. Learn how to use the torpedo reticle. Learn how to aim for shell types and gun caliber. And when in doubt, use the training room. What do you think of this list? Are there some things you'd have in your top 10 that you think I might have missed? Let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in ship reviews, keep an eye out for my bluffs. And if you want to discuss this top 10, upcoming videos, or anything in particular, please join my Discord, Dark Lab. Link will be down in the comments. Dark Lab is a genuinely nice place to hang out and exchange ideas with interesting people. Thanks for watching, folks. Stay sane, and I'll catch you on the next one.